I'm with Costa Grusco. Now, Costa, how old are you? Uh, I'm 14, so I'm coming to 15. And were you born here in Israel? Actually, no. I was born in um, Ukrainian, and I flew to Israel when I was two years old. Now, do you actually speak Russian? Uh, yeah, I do. But I've, when I came to Israel, I learned Russian until I was five. And after that, I came to the school. And there, I started to learn Hebrew. And it kind of got me confused. And so I had some problems with, with my Hebrew. And then I stopped Russian. And uh, I forgot almost all the Russian. So I remember now just how to speak, not to read, and not to write. So I've learned Hebrew. So they're your main languages. Now, what type of school do you go to? Do you go to a Christian school or do you go to a state school? I go to a state school. It's like an open school. Everybody in that school, like Christians, Muslims, Jewish, everyone. Every time. What's the school system like here in Israel? Depends. Uh, every school is different. Some have other rules, some have those rules, and it's sometimes in my pretty... There are schools that give exams, like tons of exams, but in my school, it's different. We have no exams, so 10th grade, we learn more about how to express ourselves, express in actions. The other schools, just every, every type of school have different way of uh, teaching. Is there a big discipline problem in the schools here in Israel? There are, school, there are quite a uh, few schools that for especially uh, kids with no discipline that don't know how, it's hard for them to understand things. It's very difficult for them to recognize and think and be concentrated. So there are schools for um, those kids and there are schools, normal schools. If teacher is not as the kids like, so it would be hard for them to understand and the discipline will grow larger, and uh, for the teacher, it will be harder to teach, and it depends on what teacher it is. So, is it easy to evangelize in the schools here in Israel? <laughs> no, it's really not easy, because lots of types in the school, like I told before, Palestinians, and Muslims, and Jewish, and they are always believing what you believe, so it's a bit hard to tell them about Jesus, tell them about um, your faith, because they don't really agree with you. But there are people, types of people in my school that really just got into it and really listening and they don't get upset. And uh, it's really strong because I have a few friends, believers, that helped, helped me as well. So uh, we, we had a few moments of evangelism in our school and uh, that really helped us. But there are always those kids that will always uh, say, no, it's not true, it's a lie, don't believe that. And the type of schools that the kids, if they hear that someone believes in Jesus, they might hit him so hard that he will go to a hospital or something and really might injure his faith and, and such. There are really extreme kids in schools that really take it hard. It depends what school, again. So they don't really like messianic believers in the, in the school system? Most of them don't, yeah. But God has been able to use you to speak into the lives of the people in your school. Yes, he did. Uh, actually, I even um, gave some Bibles, and just kids came to me and asked me questions, and it's really wonderful, because with the power of God, I really can feel that he's making a change in those kids. Did that cause any problems with, with the parents, for instance? Oh, yes, actually it did. There was a parent meeting with the teachers, and a few parents told that there's evangelism in the class, and they don't like it, but it didn't really affect it. It was a small problem. It wasn't really a big deal, but it's okay now. Nobody got hurt or um, kicked out of school. It was really a small problem, so it didn't affect us. Okay, do you as believers get the opportunity and chance to meet together just to pray for the, the rest of the school? Yeah, we do. We, we are four in our class, four believers, and there are 56 kids unbelievers. But we really get along with each other, and it's really wonderful that Jesus just put four of us together, pray for school, for, for the kids, for, the, for our faith that he will give us strength and power to keep on evangelizing and, and just showing the kids that there is God, there is love, there is hope, and just to be together and never let go. So you can really say God has been moving in your school in the last year? Oh yes, very much. It was a very blessed year, and I really feel a big, big change in me, in God, and everything around me, and it's wonderful. Now you just recently had a project in your school. Uh, of course, we know that uh, Israel had a war in, with Hamas in Gaza, and there's been a special project that you've taken on board in the school. What's that? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that's a project that teachers 
have made. They ask the kids to bring some stuff from home, like blankets, food, toys, and such, just to, to send it to Gaza. Those people that didn't do nothing, the innocent people, we have, that um, their homes have been broken, have been fall, and they have nowhere to live or something to eat. So uh, the teachers organize it and lots of kids have bring stuff and it's wonderful that not just believers uh, care about each other even those that doesn't believe even those that have no god um showing that they care about the uh, gaza people and gaza really will see that israel is not just about um killing and destroying it's about caring about each other and loving and seeing that there is a hope for peace between the palestinians and between the israeli that's so nice to hear then last year you were on a missions trip where did you go to oh i went to canada with uh, my group king's kids and it was really wonderful it was blessed time and i got known god so much and he really blessed me a lot trip and i've been in a better relationship with um, people in my group in king's kids and i've uh, known some new friends in canada so uh, what was the best part of the trip what really touched your heart when you were there it was a camp it was just i don't know it was like an open i opened the new road it just uh, touched my heart so much because first of all i didn't came for one day and went it was two weeks of me hanging with those believers in canada and knowing them and knowing god more and it really helped me and i um, hope that it helped them as well and the congregation there was great all the um great time and the worship and the testimonies was very powerful it was preached touched now it cost you 14 and uh, last year you had the bar mitzvah was that, was that right Yes, that's right. So are you a man now? <laughs> oh, yes, I am a man. <laughs> so what was it like for you uh, having a bar mitzvah? Do you have a bar mitzvah even though you're a believer in Jesus? And what was it like? Well, I know a few Messianic Jews that didn't have a bar mitzvah. But this is not a Jewish bar mitzvah. It's a bar mitzvah between you and God. Like moving another step closer to God and your faith in God. And um, you are showing that you are grown up and you are going in, in the God's road. And I think that in that moment when I had that bar mitzvah, it changed me absolutely. It was the first time I really felt that I'm with God, that he's in my heart, that he is working now. He just opened opened his um, factory and he's just working and believing in me. And since then, I would just grew more and more and more and more and more in God. So what's your prayer finally for the youth of the, the city of Jerusalem? The, lots of problems now with the youth here actually really sad me because some go to the church, go to the prayer meeting, but after it, they go again out to drink and smoke and just forgetting about all the things. And I really pray so they could just know God more see that God God is there to hold them, not to make them fall, because if they keep on doing that, it just won't let them uh, keep on moving in their faith, and it really might hurt them, and the future, and all around them, the future of them, and it really might injure all, all around. I really pray so they could just see God, feel Him, and see that He's one and only, and that He can change things, and even if they fall down, He will rise them up. Okay, Costa, thank you very much.